agenda is public hearings. First item is the broken rack. Good evening, commissioners. So tonight, actually, you know what? I'm gonna add the street name here, which I just noticed is missing. Excuse me. <laughs> That's why we hired her. She thinks on her feet. Detail read. <laughs> Tonight we're reviewing, you're reviewing, uh, two conditional use permits, one for the proposed use and one for um, an alternative parking plan and design review for x-ray improvements for the broken rack. This is an existing business at the public market. Uh, they are not renewing their lease there and instead are looking at moving across town to a existing building, triangular shaped, uh, just south of Powell. This is the outline of the building here. Powell Street and Hollis is here. And in green, I've shown the green way. Uh, this section is constructed. This is uh, in litigation, hopefully to be constructed soon. This section here has, um, has been cleaned and is expected to be under construction this coming summer. So the building sits adjacent to the Greenway. Um, and just I wanted to call out some of the adjacent residential uses. Uh, Parkside is under construction now. Elevation 22 has been there for a while. And then down here is the terraces adjacent to the railroad tracks here. This is uh, the existing building. The uh, building faces onto Peladu Street here. It is a lot line building. The property line sits against <coughs> all of these walls. So this is the north property line here facing towards Powell. And then on Stanford Street looking north, this is the hypotenuse of the triangle um, looking onto the greenway here. What the architect has done in this site plan is laid uh, the building site plan on top of the conceptual drawing for the greenway. This is because eventually uh, the Broken Rack would like to make use of this adjacency. They are planning to apply in the future for a minor conditional use permit for access to the greenway. This is a new use permit with this new code and this will be the first time that use permit comes to us. It is a staff level permit so it will not come to this body for review. Also, further into the future, once the Greenway is constructed, the applicant plans on applying for a sidewalk cafe permit. Again, that's a staff level permit. But because uh, the applicant is very excited about these adjacencies, they've shown all of those proposals on this plan. So as a reminder, the access and the sidewalk cafe are not under review tonight, <laughs> um, but they are presented here um, as possibilities. So this is the entire block of between uh, Hollis and Powell and Peladu and um, Stanford. Again, the building is facing to the bottom, south or west onto Powell, Peladu, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so the, as I said, the building is a lot line building. Uh, the entire parcel is represented by the building. Uh, this parking lot here is owned by the same person, uh, but is a separate parcel. And so that's where the conditional use permit for an alternative parking plan comes in because the parking would be off site. And the honor bar sits here. So again, site plan with the greenway up top. All of these green call outs would be future access points. So I wanted to uh, name them and call them out, but they are not under consideration at this point. What is considera under consideration are the red callouts, such as the trash enclosure located at the back of the parking lot with additional landscaping proposed here for screening from the greenway, the five parking spaces designated for the broken rack with the driveway entrance here. The uh, frontage on Peladu has two existing ginkgo trees here and a third empty tree well. The applicant will be uh, filling this and creating a new tree well here and putting uh, ginkgo trees there, as well as providing <coughs> potted trees along the sidewalk. Um, there will also be bicycle parking at the front of the use. This is the floor plan itself. Most of the larger portion of the building is used by the pool tables with a party room um, at the top of this corner. This small uh, storage room here will be where the uh, staff bike parking is located. The front door sits here. You come in, there's a bar area with seating adjacent, a kitchen in the rear, some additional pools and snooker tables here, darts. 
uh, foosball. The um, office area is in the back. And then also called out here are two very small second floor storage areas. Um, again, these will just be for storage, which is why they do not need ADA access. So there's a stair going up to this corner room, which is shown here in a photo. And then this small space here will be sitting atop this top corner and it's only being preserved because that's where the roof access is. So this tiny corner here will be a door to a ladder which leads to this small space which leads to the roof. That's all it is. Um, and just to call out in the future they're proposing uh, double doors here for customers, a single door here for kitchen access and a window here for access onto this patio area. Um, I will point out that the patio area um, is the, the cost of construction and the materials for that area is a condition of approval for this permit under review today. The applicant's aware of that and is okay with that. Um, and that does not imply a necessary approval of the sidewalk cafe in the future. And they're aware of that. So that is the floor plan there. Moving on to the elevations. Uh, again, the ginkgo trees here, the potted trees are on either side of these doors here. Uh, the bicycle parking will actually be clustered closer to the front door, uh, closer to these two racks here. There are four inverted U racks proposed on the front. Um, this small uh, kind of bulge in the facade will be uh, added so that the existing uh, projecting sign and neon can be added to the front of the facade here. There are three awning signs. I'm sorry, they're not more visible here. Two small logos at the outer corners of these awnings and then uh, the broken rack across this. All of those signs together add up to 49.75 square feet on this frontage. Uh, the awning signs are illuminated by gooseneck lighting, uh, which will shine, shine down. And then the projecting sign again is neon. Facing north towards Powell, there are two uh, main signs. The broken rack here is 48.44 square feet, and the total signage here is 149.56 square feet, equaling 198 square feet total. Uh, the trash enclosure will sit here, excuse me, at the back of the parking lot. Um, and again, gooseneck illuminations for the, wind, uh, the signs, which will be painted directly onto the wall. The east or greenway elevation is shown here. Now, for clarity, these access points cannot be installed unless the uh, minor uh, use permit for access is approved, which will be applied for shortly. Um, what you're reviewing here is design review for these installations. So should that use permit not be approved, uh, none of these uh, openings will be installed. So there are two abandoned windows, one new window, the kitchen door, the the customer entrance, an awning with a sign, and again, this existing door here, which will be for exiting. And I also included on this um, slide the south entrance, which is only a few feet across. It's basically, if you take the pointier end of the triangle, it just got a little blunted. So there's a gas meter that sits here, sits there. The um, applicant is proposing one of those potted trees to kind of shield that, and then a small logo sign on the end of that. So the Greenway or East Elevation has 47.6 square feet of signage. The South Elevation has 15.29 square feet of signage proposed. The operating characteristics of the broken rack are generally towards the evening. So they open at 11.30 a.m. Monday through Friday and at 2 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. They close at 1 a.m. Sunday through Thursday and 2 a.m. Friday through Saturday. And again, those are kind of the nights carried into morning, obviously. Uh, they employ 20 to 22 people with two to three on a shift at a time. And all of their uh, front of house employees have uh, tips training to help prevent alcohol related problems that may come up. Um, their general occupancy is expected to be 100 to 150 people on the high ends with a kind of maximum of 255. That's what they've seen in the past and expect given the square footage of the space. Uh, they will be serving lunch on weekdays and dinner daily. The kitchen will close at 10 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and 11 p.m. Friday and Saturday. 
And once the Greenway is open, uh, they may offer coffee or breakfast as well. And just to clarify, in case you were curious, the reason that this use is a bar instead of a restaurant is because the, primarily because there is a time period during which only alcohol is served and not food. So a restaurant must have food served at all times. As far as conformity to the zoning standards, the use is eating and drinking establishment, bar, nightclub, lounge. Uh, this use is allowed in the MUR zone with a CUP. For parking, the demand is for parking spaces. This is so low because it is in a transit hub which halves all of these numbers. It is also because the primary use is the bar use and staff determined that they should therefore calculate their parking only on the bar and restaurant seating area. So that instead of using the entire building, which is primarily the accessory use of indoor recreation, we've used just the seating areas to calculate the parking. So with a demand of four, the range is three to five spaces. They've proposed five spaces. For bike parking, the requirement is two interior and two exterior. They are proposing eight exterior on the plans. The applicant has been made aware that they also need to provide interior and have offered that triangular storage space for the staff uh, bike parking. Um, and that's a condition in the proposed staff report. And at BPAC, there was also a proposal uh, to add interior customer parking adjacent to the front door and the applicant was friendly to that idea I understand has incorporated it into their future plans. For landscaping, because of the minimal improvements to the existing building, there is no requirement. The only exterior space um, is that small area where the meter is in any case. So they are replacing the street trees and uh, proposing those 10 potted trees along most of the elevations, but are not uh, breaking any new ground for the uh, landscaping. The design guidelines are listed in your staff report that apply to this project. There is only one that is unmet, and that is pertaining to greenways, that public art should be located along greenways. A condition of approval that is standard is that any project with a valuation over $300,000 uh, must make a 1% or pay a 1% valuation uh, fee of public art. Um, if this project ends up being valued at higher than 300000 that fee will apply. So those conditions requiring that fee are included in your staff report. For signage, uh, this may seem familiar from last month where EBI had large signs proposed. The aggregate sign area allowed with a minor uh, use permit is one square foot per lineal foot of building frontage. In this case, the broken rack has 180.5 lineal feet along Peladu and is therefore allowed 180.5 square feet of signage with a minor sign permit. The plans are showing 310 square feet of signage, which is more than that allows. However, <coughs> signs totaling more than the aggregate sign area may be considered on a case-by-case -case basis and require planning commission approval. That's why you're reviewing it here. It should be noted, however, that if and when the greenway access is approved, that elevation or that frontage will then be included um, per the code in the signage calculation. At that point, uh, the signage allowance will jump to 387 square feet, which does uh, more than allow for the 310 that's proposed. I'm now going to read through the four sets of findings required by this project. The proposed use is consistent with the general plan. The location, size, coverage, density, design, and operating char characteristics of the proposed use will be compatible with and will not adversely affect the surrounding area, including neighborhood character, street design, and capacity, safety, noise, and lighting. The proposed use is consistent with the cap capability of the water supply, wastewater disposal, fire, and police systems to operate adequately and cost-effectively. The proposed use, is at its propo use at its proposed location will provide a uh, facility that will contribute to the general well-being of the surrounding neighborhood and community. The proposed use complies with all applicable standards and requirements of these planning regulations. These are the findings for the use permit for the bar use. Next are the findings for the alternative parking plan allowing the parking to be on an adjacent site as opposed to the same site um, as the main use. They are that the applicant has convincingly demonstrated that it is physically impossible to provide the required number of parking spaces in conformance with the design standards of section 9-4406 on the same lot as the principal use to be served by the parking and that the parking arrangement approved 
that a parking arrangement approved pursuant to this section will be in place at all times during operation of the principal uses to be served by the parking. Next, the findings for a major sign permit. That the proposed sign is necessary because of the nature of the establishment and its location. That the proposed sign is no larger than is necessary to adequately identify the establishment or the sign is of extraordinary design significance justifying the size. That the proposed sign will comply with all the applicable provisions of this article including but not limited to design principles. The sign material, color, graphic, excuse me, size, material, color, graphic, style, illumination and other features of the proposed sign are in keeping with the visual character of the area. The sign will be readable, taking into account the proportion between different parts of the sign, its visibility from important vantage points and other relevant design features. The sign will relate well to the design of the building and be compatible with its architectural features, colors, and textures. And finally, for design review, the design of the project is consistent with the general plan, including but not limited to its urban design goals and policies. The design of the project conforms to the Emeryville design guidelines and any other applicable design <coughs> guidelines or criteria, and that the project is of a high design quality that is compatible with and will not adversely affect the surrounding area. Staff feels that all of these findings can be made for this project, including or with the conditions of approval that were in your staff report. Comments from BPAC included that they could provide uh, electric bike charging stations within the employee bike parking area, that they create an indoor area for customer bike parking near the entrance, which the applicant has taken up, create an on-site uh, bike parking corral, this would be in a parking space on the street, place more windows along the greenway. No public comment was received on this project. Staff comments from DCC included that the applicant shall pay the city an amount equal to the cost of construction and materials of an outdoor seating area on the Greenway adjacent to 5768 Peladu Street, as well as staff time necessary for design change and for easement for exiting along the Greenway if access is approved. That's what I mentioned before. And that the parking spaces for the broken rack shall be stenciled or signed, that they are solely limited to those uses. With that, staff recommends approval of this, these use permits and design review applications subject to the conditions of approval attached to your staff report. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. The uh, applicant and business owners, uh, Marilyn and Wayne Boucher are here, as well as the architect, Rick, Kat Rick Kattenberg. Excuse me. Are there any questions? Um, I do have a few questions. Um, I know we're not uh, considering the the Greenway or the mm -hmm. cafe or anything like that, but I'm just curious what in that area where they've sort of conceptually shown um, their outdoor seating, mm -hmm. what what is there, what is proposed there as part of the Greenway plans? So the original Greenway plans did not have seating there. Um, given this application, uh, the Greenway plans have incorporated a seating area there. Should access and the sidewalk cafe permit by these applicants uh, be denied, then that area would be used for outdoor seating, just as the living room area, as it's deemed, shown in the darker brown, was meant to be. Okay. Um, I attended a study session several years ago that was done along the Greenway, mm -hmm. uh, and I made a presentation of uh, what might be done along that long blank wall mm -hmm. and it included pictures or reproductions of the uh, large interurban electric trains mm -hmm. that used to run along that strip and um, I wonder if there's any way that that could be included. Uh, you did do something like that in the Panera Bakery mm -hmm. building mm -hmm. and uh, this is it seems to me the perfect occasion to do that at the time this building is being refurbished. Mm -hmm. The, um, the standard conditions of approval within uh, the staff report now that pertain to public art say that the applicant must pay a fee of 1% of the valuation of the project or choose to use that amount of money to purchase or install their own art. And I believe it's the art committee of the city that approves what is art and that the contract is, goes through and things like that. Um, so the applicant may choose to do that. Um, you may condition that that uh, art be added. I don't think you can condition that the applicant choose to spend the money. You can condition that additional art be added there. That's right. The 
the um, condition of approval is incorporating the um, Art and Public Places Ordinance, which is codified in the Municipal Code. And the, the way that the uh, Public Art Ordinance um, is structured is to allow the applicant to, uh, the choice to either um, contribute art to the city um, and have the um, art committee, you know, weigh in on that, um, or to make uh, an in lieu contribution. Um, and so, because the municipal code provides for the ability for the applicant to make that uh, choice, um, uh, we can't, as part of our conditions of approval, require them to make that choice. Uh, the, our, our ordinance, our municipal code, allows them the opportunity to choose to either make the in-lieu contribution or to provide public art. Well, uh, at the Panera Bakery, they didn't want to do that, and somehow uh, we forced it upon them. And uh, I don't remember the details of that, but... Uh, uh, at one time, they asked not to put up the mural. If I can clarify, I believe it's legal to make a condition that requires that art be installed. The applicant can then choose to use the required fee to pay for that art, or can choose to make an in lieu contribution and also pay for the art. So you're not forcing the choice, you're simply requiring that art be provided there. Is that? So nothing, we have no ability to uh, put anything on that wall. No, that's not what I believe you, I believe you can. Yeah. You simply can't <coughs> make, can. require that it be that art fee contribution, be paid for by the art fee contribution. So that wall is private property and? The wall is private property. The current Greenway plan that you see here has two openings in the tree line here and here. Those are proposed green screens that are simply meant to block the blank wall. Um, if something beautiful were provided on that wall, those wouldn't be required. Um, they're a little bit of an issue because they can't be a smack against the building, which is on the property line, and we can't build something there, so they have to be out, which then provides a hidden area behind the green screen for unwanted actions. <laughs> So well, it then looks like the landscaping would block any view of the wall anyway. There are trees Except and then there's, green the, screen I believe yeah, the green screens small are, spaces, are proposed for about six feet high. Yeah. And the wall there I think is 20 feet on that elevation. Are we still waiting for an answer? Yeah, if uh, we need to take a quick look at our municipal code, so if we could return back to this question. Are there any other questions? Do we know the species of the trees proposed for the planters? No, I do not know the species. I'll let the applicant answer that when they come okay. up. And um, th so those planters would be in the public right of way? They would. They would need an encroachment permit for them. Okay. Just as they would to have permission to plant the ginkgo trees um, and things like that. I should, I should mention the potted trees were a design solution to the fact that this existing building has outward swinging doors on a lot line, which means they swing into the public right of way. And so the idea was to provide a cushion such that a pedestrian would never be walking and then have a door swing into their face. So they're placed on either side of all of the <coughs> doors that are proposed along that front edge. Um, one last question. The, um, the, on the plans, on the floor plan, there are what appears to be um, pool tables that are labeled bar. Is that uh, like a different I size of pool table? I believe that's a different size and a different game. I am not familiar enough with pool to tell you what the different okay. options are, but I'll I believe you can applicant. learn that from the applicant. Snooker. There's snooker, oh, uh, which is the largest good. one. Billiards, which is different from the regular ones for, I guess, regular pool. And then there's also these smaller bar ones. So I am completely ignorant of the variations of pool. <laughs> um, you mentioned that there's plans for or that the applicant is now willing to do interior <laughs> bike parking for um, for the customers? That is my understanding. Okay, is there a plan that shows where that's? That is not shown in these plans. That was uh, proposed by BPAC um, on September 9th, I believe it was, uh, after these plans were delivered to us. So they're not in these plans, they're not in the conditions requiring them, they're not part of the code, um, but you can condition that. Okay. Um, I believe the applicant at this point is planning to provide at least two spaces, but okay. I'll let them answer that more fully. And 
Um, I also, I was walking by there and noticed that along the street there, a lot of the area where cars would be able to park are, is kind of um, either loading zone or two hour parking. Um, is there any plan or are there any plans to change the curb striping in that area? Do you mean on the uh, east side of Paladu there? Yeah, or west, or both sides of Paladu, okay. yeah. Uh, I believe that is those different anyway. striping uh, configurations had been requested by past occupants of these buildings. Mm -hmm. At this point, the common procedure is for a building occupant to come to the Transportation Committee and request through the Secretary, which is our Chief of Police, Ken James, that the item be considered to repaint the curb. Um, and the Transportation Committee considers what's going on, what the use is, uh, if the loading can go away safely, and then forwards a recommendation to the City Council for that action. I have sort of a related question. Um, given I understand why we're looking at five parking spaces because of the classification as a con use of concern, mm -hmm. but we have a destination business with five parking spaces. Has anybody looked at the amount of on-street parking that's available? Because as Brad said, there's a lot of a lot of um, streets on the surrounding blocks that don't have any on-street parking whatsoever. I will add that the parking lot that contains the five uh, designated broken rack spaces is a shared use lot that again is owned by the same owner mm -hmm. and there is an agreement or an understanding that after hours, after work hours, most if not all of those spaces will be available for spillover parking. However, the Planning Commission cannot approve those as required spaces. Right. So people will be able to use that lot to technically illegally park there. <coughs> Um, typically the same hours that the honor bar is open, which also fills that lot up. Again, that mm -hmm. is uh, not legal parking. The honor bar's parking lot is mm -hmm. only this area. I do know that people park here for the honor bar. Um, that is up to the owner to regulate. But Arlie, couldn't there, regarding that lot, couldn't, since the owner owns the building and the lot, could not it be written into agreement that's giving them the five spaces also say that the rest of the lot is available for use? That after can be hours? written to their lease agreement. It can't be written into your approval. Okay. I would recommend that be done. Let me, let me just clarify that you could approve a conditional use permit to exceed the maximum parking allowed by the code, but they have not applied for such a conditional use permit. And <clears throat> so this public hearing has not been noticed for such a conditional use permit, so you couldn't approve that tonight. tonight. You do have the ability to approve that, but it's not before you. But the applicant's planning to speak, is that correct? And they can let us know what's in there? Okay. So I have several other questions, if I could take a turn. Um, I was just wondering, where is the waste oil, and gre not the grease trap, but the actual waste oil produced by the restaurant, where is that going to be picked up? Is that going to be in the trash I area? believe it goes in the trash enclosure. I'm not sure. Okay. That. I have a follow-up question to that is um, I'm concerned looking at the size of the trash um, area mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that is large enough to contain vessels for all manners of trash because there's going to be trash dumpster type of trash there's going to be recycling um, composting mm -hmm. there's also hazardous waste such as batteries fluorescent tubes and those kind of things I'm concerned that this space isn't going to handle all those so I'd just like to make sure that that is uh, Concerns such as those are kind of contained within the standard conditions of approval. However, I also know that the applicant and architect have worked directly with Peter Schultz Allen, who is uh, are the main contact, as well as Marcy Greenhut. They're the main contacts between waste management and our, our development applicants um, to make sure that all of those containers and enclosures are sized appropriately. So I don't know what those numbers are. I don't have the numbers in my staff report, I apologize. But, no, that's okay. uh, but they have made contact with our kind of waste management people and our And everyone feels them. comfortable that that's plenty of size in there, okay. And then um, the watering of the potted plants, are those gonna be through drip irrigation or? I'll leave that to the applicant to answer. Okay, so we're not guaranteed that those aren't gonna dry up and die in their place. I'll leave that to the applicant to answer. <laughs> okay. I have one more question about the trash enclosure. So how would that be accessed from the um, from the interior, from the building? So they, they would come out the, the main entry and walk along Paladu and then through the parking lot? This brings up one of the other complications with this site, which is that 
Uh, there, as I said, there is an existing exit door at the northeast corner. I'm going to go back one more. Right here. That door exists right now. However, right outside of it is city property. Um, and to use that door uh, as a required exit requires an easement from the city uh, <clears throat> onto their land, either exiting out to Peladu here or onto the parking lot here, and then an easement from that owner to go out. So uh, this door should not be used um, and t for common trash exiting, things like that, even until the greenway is built. Uh, if if that easement is not pursued pre pre or before the greenway is built, then an additional exit door will have to go here, and the applicant should at all times use these front doors to access the trash until the greenway is built. Okay. So, so yes, they should they should walk basically out either their front door or one of the side exit doors into the back okay. to has, just deposit trash there. Has has County Health reviewed that yet? Like, do we, do we know if that is sufficient? I don't know. Uh, about the pedestrian path of travel. I do think, I'm not positive, I do think that they have spoken with Peter about waste management accessing the trash enclosure, so at least the trucks can get in there to pick it up. Um, but as far as the county review, I don't believe that's happened yet. <coughs> has the fire department uh, reviewed this in terms of exits? Uh, you know, there are t uh, four, uh, 20 gaming tables, uh, numerous bar stools, numerous dining tables. The, there is ongoing discussion with the fire department and the building department as to uh, where the exits must be and uh, how they can be kind of accounted for should any easements be needed. My current understanding is that if the entrance door here and this exit door shown and another exit door here not shown on these plans are all provided that those will be sufficient for exiting for the entire building. Wow. And the, uh, the diagrams here show two uh, grease interceptor locations. Has one been chosen? Uh, I believe the grease interceptor is meant to be here. Okay, so the one in the street down by that new exit. That be... was previously proposed um, and it was explained that Public Works does not like to grant encroachments for grease interceptors in the street. So it'll be in the parking lot? Yeah. And that's approved by the owner of the property? The One of the conditions of approval uh, requiring previous to a building permit being issued um, is a, an agreement with the owner of this adjacent property, which is the same owner, right. for the trash and the landscaping adjacent to it, the use of the parking, any exiting that may happen across the property, and the grease interceptor. So all of the uses that are there. And those are all, that that's a condition of, the, of approval in your staff report. Okay, okay. The, the accessible parking space on the plans doesn't doesn't appear accessible to me. Is that I mean it, it doesn't appear to have the yeah. required sort of loading area. I, I actually I walked by it the other day and it that was a question I also had that it's not currently compliant and I didn't know if there were plans or requirements that it be made compliant or if there have been any preliminary meetings with the with that the, will be up to building to enforce. Okay. Um, actually, my understanding is that our building department does not actually enforce ADA. It is um, a federal law, so the city does not enforce that. We simply inform them of what is required. No, that's this actually part of the building code. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's the okay. uh, state building code disabled access requirements, okay. not ADA. I mean, so that will come up in their discussion with the building division. Um, if more space or a different layout is required, then that will be required and uh, the building permit will not be approved without the Stuff. plans showing those things. Yeah, I mean the reason I, I think art. you're probably bringing up also, Sean, is that I, I mean just based on what I saw it looks like they'll probably need another four feet of, of pedestrian. Of, I believe uh, the loading is on area. the sidewalk yeah. there now. And so, it. well just to extend it to make it a van okay. stall or, All right. or put it on the right side if, or the other side if it's not a van stall, but well, just seemed like that might impact the number of, of uh, parking spaces allocated for the for the site. So I had to go back to the commission to reapproval of all these changes. Are there any other questions? Okay, with that, I'll let the applicant come up and answer any questions you may have.
for public art fee because it's not in Oakland. I'm not in Emmett, no. Good evening. Um, maybe I should just pick up a couple <laughs> that I heard that I still remember um, about the inner urban train. My father was a big train enthusiast. I don't know how far our little uh, contribution would go. Um, and I don't know how big it's going to be yet because we don't have the final budget. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, putting a train on the wall would be fabulous. Um, about the parking, um, yes, the, our current lease uh, says that we have the five required spots during the day. Uh, and after that, uh, shared use of the 35 spots. And actually, Honor Bar is supposed to stay on the other side of the building, yes, I understand it. But as you know, or would imagine, our business is heavily a nighttime business. Our, uh, we do have people during the day, but it's um, not as many. And those that do come into lunch, we expect to be people who are walking from work or home. So we, don't, we feel it's a good parking situation for us. Um, the trees, um, oh, about the handicap. Um, in none of the um, discussions we've had with the building department has that come up. Uh, personally, I thought it's already a, a recognized as a handicapped spot, so uh, that's a new question. If something has to be done, I assume we'll have to. Uh, about the trash enclosure, um, we have met on site with people from West Waste Management and from the building department, and it does have space for uh, what we're using a cu uh, two cubic yard uh, trash, um, also maybe a two cubic yard for recycling, and then a cart for uh, composting. I'm not aware of a, f of a um, requirement to have a place for hazardous materials. It may not be a requirement, I'm not sure. And um, as far as, um, what's the other, oh, cooking oil. Uh, I'm not sure, but presently, you know, I have people who want my oil for biofuel, so I will be happy to dispose of it responsibly to them so that they can. I was just it. concerned that with all those containers, everything has to be separated. Is there enough room in that enclosure to handle? Well, as that? I say, we have met with waste management in the city, and we believe it's, just, it's adequate. Okay. Um, the potted trees, I don't know. Um, if you have a suggestion, I'd be happy to hear it. Um, and uh, I imagine that we will be, um, I would like to be able to simply water them the old fashioned way. Um, they w I will be looking at them every day and I don't intend to let them die. So uh, I think I'm hoping that will be adequate. If there are other questions. I was curious about the the smaller, what appear to be the smaller sized pool tables on the plans. That's just, most of our tables are what are called regulation. That's nine by four and a half. A bar sized table, it's, it's just a pool table. It's not where you belly around and drink. Uh, it's, it's just a seven by three and a half. Are there, right now there's, um, there's mirror film on the, on the glazing along Paladu. Um, I was just wondering if there's any plans to remove that, possibly replacing it with something tinted but not mirrored to give a little bit more connection between the street and the, the space inside? Uh, that hasn't been considered um, in while we want to have obviously some ambient light and there is some, um, there are a couple of skylights uh, in the eating, dining area, actually to play pool you need uniform light. So anything that creates shadows as the sun moves and so forth is undesirable for us. So we haven't contemplated changing anything about the glazing, but, and I think that the lighting will probably be more of an issue on the side that's is just a wall right now, so. Um. Also, I. I heard that they're, you're planning to put in gooseneck lights on the Paladu side also, and I didn't see on the plan. Is that because they're behind the awnings? Or? Um, yeah, I was surprised when Arlie said that too because I didn't know we were putting any <laughs> gooseneck lights lighting They weren't there. actually shown on the Paladu elevation, but I did see them uh, on the north elevation yeah. mm -hmm. in 
uh, you know, in a side view, arching over the. Oh, right uh, here. Oh. So, so I guess I guess the question then is how is the how is the Paladu side being lit? Well, you know there will be lights under the awning. There are presently that light the sidewalk. Okay. Um, and um, frankly, I'm not too concerned about people being able to read the awning signage because obviously we'll have the larger signage on the north end of the building. Mm -hmm. um, and there will be some sort of signage painted on the door, a smaller, mm -hmm. you know, identifying what the business it's is. So oh, I think so. that's probably adequate. But there are lights under the awnings that light the sidewalk? Yes. Okay. Well, um, I'd like to thank you for listening to me and uh, say that we're really excited about the possibility of moving to this location. We think it'd be a great location for us, and we think we'd be a good fit with the area. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Oh. Uh, Chair Cardoza, I do have, a, I believe, an answer on the Panera mural. The Commission may recall that the Panera project was originally approved in 2010 and then uh, they did a bunch of value engineering when they got their cost estimate and um, did a lot of changes to the design and changes to the materials and so forth and it was substantial enough that it had to come back to the Commission for approval of all those modifications and that was in 2011 and it was at that time that the Commission suggested the mural and the applicant I believe agreed to that on the floor of the Commission meeting uh, as kind of sort of to make up for the may you could say the lowering of the quality of some of the materials on the building so they agreed to it at that point um, and then they got into the conditions that way I would also note that Panera was somewhat unique in that it is part of the East Bay Bridge Shopping Center and because of that, it's subject to the JPA between Oakland and Emeryville. Um, and, and under that uh, JPA, a building that is entirely in Oakland is subject to Emeryville planning entitlements, but Oakland building permits. And because it was subject to Oakland building permits, because the building is entirely in Oakland, the public art fee did not apply to it. So there was no public art requirement for the Panera project, so the mural was kind of a substitute for that. But it had been presented in the original uh, drawings that were shown to us. And a, I don't believe so. Maybe in a study session. Uh, uh, st I don't believe so. Really? Staff had suggested that that wall be used for art <coughs> in past meetings, and that was probably presented under DCC comments mm. in the staff report, but a uh, Art was never shown on that wall that in images provided by the applicant. Okay. And what? Well, right. Yeah, right. That came later. You, you directed them to work with staff to design and install the mural. So what you see out there today was worked out between staff and. <laughs> her, right. <laughs> okay. Uh, now open the meeting to the public. Is there anybody who wishes to speak on this project? <clears throat> See no. No one interested in speaking. I'll close the uh, public meeting and turn it over to the commission. Comment? Sure. Um, go ahead, Brad, and I'll, I'll go. I'll follow you. Or how? Just we'll go, go on. Down down okay. down <laughs> New to this. <laughs> we just. Yeah, I mean, I, we just take turns. I, I would like to. It seems like there's a lot of work being done on the interior um, and there's work to the exterior including signage and, and a new uh, raised parapet for the sign. Um, I guess it would be nice to see a little bit more attention paid to the exterior. I don't want it to be cost prohibitive but just seeing the mirror, glade, the mirror uh, film on those windows sort of reminds me of I don't know, early 80s pool hall instead of a 20, 21st century pool hall um, and uh, Best. yeah I, I guess I a little bit of con I mean usually I'm not
pushing for more parking, but I just have a little bit of concerns about the parking, and it'd be nice to get some clarification on the uh, the lease arrangement that would allow more parking in the you know after hours in the parking lot, and and whether or not some of the street parking that's currently loading or two-hour parking might be able to be opened up for longer hours. Um, I don't know why that's the way it is. There's some items. That curb parking there? That must be um, the same way yeah, uses. Brad, I agree with you with regard to uh, a lot of work is, gone, is going into the interior. Um, I think that the exterior, it kind of concerns me that there's not as much being done on the north elevation and on the, um, on the elevation that's facing the greenway. It just, it's just very blank. Um, and I understand that there would be some challenges and cost involved in terms of, you know, creating additional openings such as windows um, or doors, but um, it would be great to see, you know, these wonderful windows that you have on the Pelado side of the building that you get to interact with the greenway from inside the building, and that's just not really there. Um, with regard to the, the glazing, I hadn't noticed that until you pointed out in the picture. Uh, maybe that there can be some shades in, that, in those windows so that you can address issues of glare and lighting inside the space, because obviously you need to have uh, level lighting in order to you know to play those uh, games um, but it would make the building more modern not having that mirrored look and and maybe you can uh, look into some shading um, meco shades or some sort of shading that's probably less expensive than meco shades but something to address that that you can lower lower the shades if um, sun becomes an issue um, with regard to the potted trees, um, I noticed there is a hose bib um, on Pelado Street. It's further down um, and probably will be fine in terms of taking care of the potted trees on that side of the street. Um, but I'm wondering if you might want to consider having some potted trees on the north elevation, something to just give that, that north side a little more um, character. Um, so I touched on the more windows, but I don't know that that's feasible. It would be great to have more windows on the side that faces, or a window on the side that faces the greenway. Oh, I, oh, I know what it was. So the trash enclosure, just in terms of keeping that area clean, because your hose bib is so far away, I'm just wondering if there's another hose bib elsewhere and, and how are you going to get a hose around there just to hose down that area and, and keep it clean? Because it's quite a, it's pretty far away from any plumbing that I can see on the plan. So those are my comments, questions. Um, the uh, trash enclosure will have okay. water. It, I'm sorry if it doesn't show on the plan. But it will have. Its well, own. Maybe I'm not seeing it. I mean, I did see the hose bib key on um, A4, sheet A4. Right. It doesn't exist now, but so the trash enclosure design will include. It has to have a um, a drain and it has to have a water source for cleaning. Okay. Okay. And the the patio as well. Do you think you'll have? I'll pop one out there too. It's the kitchen's right there, right? It shouldn't right, be that hard. Right, yeah. Okay, so then you could, if you did have potted trees along the north side, then you could take care of those. Um, the other. I was saying between the. Um, I'm not quite sure how that fits in with the parking, you know, solid parking up to where the trash enclosure is. And then between the trash enclosure and the greenway, we are proposing to put plantings, plants, mm -hmm. so that to break, um, to give a visual, uh, to screen it. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that whole area is tight. I, I totally understand that. Um, I mean, I, even just the parking itself is kind of less than ideal because you've got a wheel stop that's right up close to the building. It's kind of challenging just to get out of your car and around the cars <coughs> to get to the front of the building. So it's, it's just something that I'm struggling with there. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was with regard to the indoor bicycle parking, 
I really think that that's something that this project needs, and I would like to propose that as a condition and see what the other commissioners think about that. You're referring to the parking for customers? For customers. Yeah, because they will be having indoor parking for um, staff. Correct, in the okay. storage area. Okay. So I just wanted to ask if there are other changes proposed to the exterior in terms of just painting and, and changing the blank surfaces that are out there? No. I just, um, I don't have a lot of comments. I am, my concern is basically something that isn't before us about how you're going to make a destination use work with such limited amount of parking that's there. And I understand it's a nighttime use, but just going around, there's there's not that much on-street parking in there. I hope that there are other opportunities <coughs> that you have for some of the other daytime use parking lots to work something out with the neighbors around there, because I think shared parking is a really um, important part of making it all work. Actually, the, um, you have to you, come up to the microphone. microphone. Um, you don't see um, cat a corner from the parking lot that we're talking about mm -hmm. uh, is a, another parking lot owned by the same entity also, and that also um, will be available at nighttime. Oh, well, that's good. So um, that makes me feel a little better. So just clarify for them what I understood is that you've already talked to the owner and your lease agreement is going to specify these things. Is that an affirmative? The lease agreement specifies that we have five uh, parking spots from um, seven a from seven a.m. until seven p.m. and the use of up to thirty-five, which would be and all that's the specified other staff, in the lease. It's in the lease. Okay, so I think now it's address. not in the lease about the one caddy corner, that's but not, yeah. informally, I've been told that as well. So you have that thirty-five, and you have whatever's on the street. And at nighttime, I think the street here is going to be pretty much theirs, because there's no one else here. So I think if they ask the city to restripe that, change the two hours to whatever, I think we're pretty much covered. <laughs> not going to be two hours at night anyway. Yeah, yeah. so I, I think we're covered with parking. I, um, I, I agree with uh, having more indoor spaces for the uh, park, bike parking spaces for the clients. I would, I would support that. And um, I, I would very much support the art on the Greenway wall. I think that would be a, a, a great addition because of the um, relative blankness at this point. And I guess I had one more question for the applicant in terms of the um, where the paving is going to be outside. It's pretty blank right there. What do you have, do you envision, what the wall that is, do you, what do you envision for that? Well, I should, come on up, I'm sorry to make you <laughs> run up and down. down. <laughs> I should, maybe I should stood up here. Um, as you can see, I mean, if we get access, it's going to be a lot more interesting than it is now, which mm -hmm. is just a flat blank sure, wall. Sure, sure. And what um, we do envision is that there's the there are the the doorways, one of them double glass doorway, and the and then there's an awning shown over the mm -hmm. patio area. That's right. Um, so um, beyond that, um, there isn't anything that we uh, in particular plan, but the trees and you know, the stuff that's going in with the Greenway will also mm -hmm. change the character of that, mm -hmm. breaking it up. Maybe the mural will just kind of continue through or something. But. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll so add that a BPAC comment was, and another BPAC comment was that there be bike parking adjacent to this patio use. That's what I was going to say. That but is this something isn't. that the city would supply it okay. once it's built. So that's why I didn't put it in the staff report. Okay. That Although it's a little bit... We're a little, uh, what's the word, um, ambivalent about that because this segment of the Greenway from Stanford all the way to 59th is not designated as a bike path. It is only a pedestrian path. Oh. But bikers could walk their bike up bikers park could could walk, there. Cyclists could walk their bikes there and park them there. I think right. a rack there is a good idea. Yeah, sure. I think that's why it wasn't included, though, in the in the Greenway design. I was going to mention that. When you read my mind. <laughs> uh, that's it. Well, I think the uh, project is pretty straightforward and simple. I was concerned about the parking, but uh, that's the uh, operator's risk, and if they feel comfortable with it, uh, uh, that's their decision. 
Um, I'm glad to see that they're interested in putting a mural on the wall, and I hope the city would be uh, work with them in terms of the planting along that wall in case a mural does go in so that it's not covered up by trees. And uh, huh. that's about it. Um, I uh, a few thoughts. Um, I'm really encouraged to see um, this application for use permit at this location. I think it's a great location for this type of use. I think um, along with uh, Honor Bar and Bureau 510 that this will really create um, sort of a hub of, of activity. Um, and um, in addition to those other um, establishments, um, you know, this will provide, um, I mean, I'm glad to see that they're plan to serve food and um, I think this will you know provide a, an additional activity um, at that sort of hub um, that being um, billiards um, or pool um, I, um, I want to make two comments that are sort of um, about how the unintended consequences of the um, planning regulations, how I see them as affecting these pro this project. Um, the first being signage, and I, I, I've, I've realized through the last two projects that we've considered, or through two recent projects, that I am doomed to have a difficult time making um, findings to increase sign area. Um, and it's not because I don't like the signage, because um, I do like the signage on this project. It's because I don't like the findings. Um, and that said, um, I think this all sort of, for me, ties into public art. Um, and I'm going to take a stab at making a nexus for um, a provision of public art on the Greenway. Um, in, I think there's two sort of prime locations for it, um, those being the areas where the green screens are proposed. And I think. Um, Arlie's explanation of sort of the, the you know the a little bit of the problematic nature of those green screens um, I think present a great opportunity in those locations for um, alternative screening ie public art um, I think that since um, I'm having a difficult time making the findings for the increased signage that it's a good opportunity um, to provide something that would um, sort of mitigate the um, visual impact of the increased sign area on the building in general. Um, and so I, I would like to propose um, an additional condition that um, that something be provided there aside from the 1% uh, for art requirement. Um, in addition, um, oh, and then the other thing I just wanted to say is I'm really pleased um, with what I've observed with this application um, and other recent applications that we've considered um, as far as parking. Um, I'm really pleased with the way the, the new planning regulations are um, are turning out. Um, it's, it's really encouraging that we're uh, no longer requiring businesses to provide parking that they don't feel that they need. Um, my, my concern um, with parking is, is much more um, in fighting its, uh, its um, visual impact than, um, than providing, um, providing it, because I think the impact is greater. Uh, and, you know, I think a, a parking, I think there's plenty of parking in this area, um, and um, I think parking, a parking shortage is actually a really, I think, is a, is a sign of a really healthy Urban environment. Um, I think a lot of a lot of places would kill for a parking shortage, um, and so those are my comments. Okay. Well, I have a couple statements to make, then some comments, and then I'm uh, wanting to add a condition of approval. But my comments are, as a neighbor of your current location, I'm sorry to see you go. Um, I think our public market is seeing a lot of vacancies lately that are not getting filled, and I don't know if that's part of your antipas of leaving or if it's just not the spot but as a member of the economic development advisory committee I'm really happy to see that you're staying in Emeryville and I'm glad to see you're making use of a building 
that since I've lived in Emeryville really has seen a lot of different changes and not a lot of good. So I think you guys are a very good plus in, uh, in what's happening. I'm excited about the idea that you would serve coffee in the morning. I'd love the idea of being able to go and sit on the greenway somewhere finally on a weekend day and, and have some coffee and, and enjoy our new outdoor living room. Um, so the one concern I have, and Arlie, I don't know if we could see it from here or if it would be on page three where the, uh, it's, I'm going back to the trash, but not the space this time. <laughs> um, I'm concerned about the, the paving treatment that's shown there. And what I'd like to suggest is that um, about where that line that comes out from the planting area, maybe come to the end of that. I think that's where any special paving treatment, I don't know if we're thinking stamped concrete or pavers, but I think it should end there. I don't think any special treatment should go over the gated part because it's going to get damaged and it's going to be soiled. So I think if the greenway paving treatment could end at the planter and the gates and the area of the garbage just be blacktop because grease is going to drip, food and stuff's going to soil that. The trucks and the wheels on the tires of the dumpsters are going to damage, whether it's pavers or stamped concrete. And I think we're just later going to have something that really is unattractive rather than something that's beautiful. So I don't know if that's something they're involved with or we are. I think that's likely the way it would turn out anyway. I think that the architect showed those connections in the same color to call them out, but the city will be constructing the greenway side of things whereas the applicant will be constructing everything on the other side. So well, this comes off the greenway and into the parking lot where they're going to landscape that area. So I think any special paving should end at the edge of the landscaping as it comes out from the building towards the north. And the, the, Say that again? The illustration shows, yeah, about right there. See where the corner of the... Right, yeah, this little bit here. Right, that should be there, but it should end where the planter ends. Mm -hmm. So no, come in right it's, there. Yeah. So the paving oh, you mean just, should, just Exactly. This, okay. So, so in front of the gates should be blacktop. Okay, blacktop here, special paving here. Correct. So that would, in that case, we would be requiring the applicant to provide special paving in this little Well, no, bit. It's, it's just what's shown on the plans. So I'm just saying, suggesting if we're showing that we're going to do some kind of special paving there, that it not go into the gated area of the trash dumpster. I think probably, well, the way it's written now, I mean, there's this color shown. Yeah. My reading of this plan was simply that that was shown in a, separate color to call it out, not okay. that there was a colored concrete. Okay. I was not made aware of any proposed change, you know, change to the, con the asphalt there. Uh -huh. So in that case, the, um, excuse me, the, this asphalt that's here would stay here. Perhaps okay. this line would be striped. I think okay. that would be good just to provide a kind of protected area. And then the path here would likely be concrete when the city builds the greenway. On the greenway, yeah. Okay, that's fine then. So the uh, only condition I'd like to add is if we would look at, as a neighbor of uh, the Broken Rack now, I live in Pacific Park Plaza, and my unit overlooks the parking lot there. And knowing that this is a nighttime event, the only time I have called the police is because of people leaving the bar at 2 o'clock in the morning tend to legal, linger in the parking lot. They tend to uh, talk there. And I'm on the 30th floor, and I can almost hear what they're saying. And then the worst thing is there, there have been times that where there have been fights. So they've talked about the security, your doorman, and things like that. What I would like to make a condition of approval is that whoever the person is closing the restaurant or the, as the security or the doorman, that they um, be vigilant in the parking lot, physically there, somewhere after 2 o'clock and before 2.30 to make sure that the um, patrons are actually getting in their cars and leaving and not creating a problem because that parking lot in particular is not observed by anybody where you know, Pacific Park Plaza overlooks the marketplace. Uh, and I can't actually say what I've seen or drug deals going down, but it had the perception of that what was happening. And so I just would like to make a condition that the city ask that the Book and Rack make sure that their staff make sure that their patrons leave the area when the, st when the bar closes. Okay. That's all I have. Well, I, have, I have one question for staff before we move on. Um, I, let's see, what was my question? Um, well, I can't remember now, sorry. Don't you hate that? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it's pretty minor, but if possible to make it also a conditional approval to remove the mirror, mirror uh, film, and I don't care if it's replaced with tinted film or or shades or what but something to 
to increase transparency but also allow you to control the control the um the shading of the the space are you familiar with the film that's at the what is it the lhasa where it it has it, it it's very dark but it doesn't have that mirror finish i don't know yeah it's another pool hall i'm sure you know but yeah i know that but i oh, can't say that i know anything about the shading it's just a, it's this film, same kind of deal, but it's a, you can sort of barely see through it. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have that staring at yourself while you're walking by kind of effect. What was that name again, Vanessa? What's that? The name of it? The Lhasa. The Lhasa. I think the, with a T-H, mm -hmm. is that right? On Shattuck Avenue? On Shattuck. In Berkeley. Yeah. Oh, um, oh, so it's the name of the establishment. Yeah. Not this is a place that has the kind of window it's a, thing it's you're talking about. It's a pool hall that has oh. the spare, um, oh. has a film that is, uh, it's very dark inside, of course, uh, but somehow it, it, it's, you can see people inside, hmm. so it is more friendly hmm. in, in that way. I remembered my question, um, which is that, um, Steph, can you remind us if there is a standard condition that they maintain landscaping? Yes. And, mm -hmm. Okay. It's in there. And I'm, I'm assuming that would also probably be a condition of the encroachment permit for the, I'm thinking for the, the planters. I don't know if it would be an additional condition to the encroachment permit, but it's in the staff report as proposed. So that would, that would cover those, those improvements. So I guess I'd like to make a motion that we approve it with the conditions of removing the tinting and the night security of the parking lot. We have a second. Um, I, before we second that, I would I'd also propose a condition about the indoor customer bike parking. Mm -hmm. So is that something that we don't want to entertain or? I think since they've already you've already looked at doing that and thought of providing that. Yeah, you could come up. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so far, we've only um, experimentally added like one uh, indoor um, bike rack, which would just accommodate two bikes. But actually, we haven't had time to do this yet. I am interested in looking at reconfiguring to make something that would part more bikes, maybe four to six. So if we just, made this a condition, you could accommodate that? In what location are you proposing? Um, I am thinking as you go into the door to the right, which right now there's a bar pool table there that maybe that will not, maybe we'll have to give up having a table there. That's why we haven't reworked these plans yet um, or tried to. Yeah. I would like to make it a so, yeah. can we go to that sheet? Um, I guess our architect will have something to say about that. <laughs> These are the two racks shown here. Okay. Oh. Or excuse me, a bike rack with just an extension of the bike along it. Mm. One or two here. Yeah, I, I'd like to see four, four to six. I think that would be uh, an amenity that you'd appreciate later if you plan for it now. So mm. four to like six a, bikes, four to six racks. Four to six bikes. Minimum so two to three racks. Two to three racks. I could go for four bikes. I think in the the space, we also have to keep in mind they need room for pool players to manipulate around the tables. Mm -hmm. And as a biker, I like indoor parking. It is kind of inconvenient getting in the door and getting around the patrons. And as long as the racks are in the front where there's a lot of glass, I'm not so uncomfortable with parking my bike outside. Mm. But it, having that option is nice, but I wouldn't push them past four. Okay. Yeah, I think that's asking a lot. Well, there's also a ramp at the entrance too, which would be another awkward thing. Uh, you know, you come in the door and you turn right. immediately. Uh, you get up to the top and you turn again. Yeah. Uh, so, quite honestly, I'm fine with the two. They're providing something along with what's outside. But I'm going to leave it up to you guys to add to it what you feel you need. I think considering. I, I think it should be for. Oh. Um, I mean, I just envision that once the greenway is built, that there will be a lot of people coming here via bike, walking their bikes, you know, accessing this area with bikes, you know, discouraging the driving because, you know, folks will be drinking. So I think to make it more 
attractive for people who are not driving and imbibing that <laughs> you have right. bikes <laughs> and a place to put your bike. Um, so. DUI applies to bikes too. And it is. <laughs> Pardon that? True. I didn't hear you. Gonna say DUI that. applies to bikes too. It does. I went to Davis and I know that. <laughs> <laughs> not personally, but. <laughs> Hope, hopefully not through experience. Uh oh, TMI. <laughs> Um, so I would I would support support for if we're taking a straw poll here. I don't know. Four. Right. Yeah. So our conditions then. I, um, as you art. Yeah. Don't forget art. the art. I really yeah. would love to. And you are saying that we can have a condition. I kind of lost track of what that condition might be. How well, would be I would in? suggest. I mean, the mural, the Panera thing was voluntarily agreed to by them. Kind of in exchange for all of the changes they were asking you to approve on the project and in light of the fact that they were not subject to the public art requirement. Uh, I'd suggest that perhaps you could put in a condition of approval that says uh, as for their public art contribution, the commission would strongly encourage them to include a mural or other artwork along the wall on the Greenway. You can't really mandate how they choose to spend their public art contribution, but you could express a strong preference. I'm happy with that. You guys okay with that? Yeah, and I, and I like the fact that um, the applicant mentioned that she has some personal experience with um, you know, her father being a train enthusiast. So you could even incorporate you know, something from his passion of trains you know, within that. Just it's an opportunity. All right. Uh, so, is there, so, if there's a motion, you had a motion. <laughs> With those conditions, I make a motion. Okay. Could, could you could repeat them? Yeah. Could so, we have remove the mirror film and provide some other form of tinting on the windows. Uh, night security as the business is shut down. And I don't, I'm not recommending that that be a paid security. I'm just saying their, their employees, particularly the doorman, the bouncer, whatever is there. Just that their employees make sure that they're there. How about uh, staff shall patrol the parking lot for half an hour after closing to make sure that patrons are not being disruptive? Perfect. Words to that effect. Perfect. Four indoor bike parking spaces for customers and strongly encouraging that the Greenway or that the public art contribution be used for art along the Greenway. Mural. Mural. Uh, Was. Ask one thing. Right. Can we just need you to yes, come up, up to the microphone. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I was just um, regarding the film. Could we stick to removing the film? Now, right now, there's uh, blinds in several places. Someone mentioned the possibility of shades. I have no idea. There's a lot of glass. How much all that film could cost, or you know, mm -hmm. yeah. finding one that would really be happy with. So if I'm happy to remove what's there and if you could let us work with it from there. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. But fi the film is pretty affordable, just saying. C can, I su can I suggest that, we, that the condition be that um, the, film, the film be removed and um, any window coverings re that is just replaced with either be shades or some sort of transparent film? The, I mean, I think yeah. I think the intent. Necessary. Well, isn't I mean, isn't the intent that it be somewhat transparent? I mean, I I, I felt like that was our, sort of our intent with the I condition. At least feel yeah. a little more transparent. And <laughs> yeah, have a little bit more. So I'm, I'm like I, I'm concerned that it's going to be removed and then replaced with other similar film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, well, it will be because it's a pool hall. It's yeah. Just that it won't be the mirror. They do have finish. to control the light. Mm -hmm. Right, but was I mean y your example wasn't it a, a film that was somewhat transparent? It was still dark, mm -hmm. but you could see some movement and any uh, lights. So f the you could see the overhead lights or the lights at the bar. Um, so you could see that there was life inside, whereas now there's not. There's you can't see anything. So mm -hmm. that's, but it's not. It's not really transparent. How, how about? Can be. How about words to the effect that the existing f uh, film on the window shall be removed? and any future window treatment shall provide enough transparency to be able to see activity inside or something like that. Me. Just leave that's it good. open. That's the intent, right? Right. Well, it also has to be dark enough inside so that, that games can be played. So that but I, 
Is that the commission's concern? I thought your concern was that you'd be able to see in. Well, and they'll I mean, take if care it of it. doesn't work, then they can't do it. <laughs> well, I, do, I think the commission would not be happy if they covered the windows with something you couldn't see through at all. Right. Right? right. Yeah. That that's correct. Right. So that's my, that's yeah. my concern. Yeah. yeah. Good evening, your great board. I, you've come up with some really good things. We're still in the early stages to a certain extent of detailing things out like the hose bibs, although all those things have already been considered. They're just not shown on, on these plans. But I wanted to address what you're just talking about. Optically, uh, whenever it's brighter outside than it is inside, all glass becomes mirror. Now, the mirror that you object to, the mirrored film, and, and I can understand that, all, all these projects, particularly this one, I think, you know, no one's brought it up and I hesitate to do it, but, you know, there's only so much uh, money to, to fix these things, if you were. And I want you to uh, recognize that on the west exposure there, that's, we get huge sun. So um, to remove that film, unless we replace it with something else, is going to add gain, heat gains in the afternoon. Uh, and uh, yet, I, I agree that it should be removed. And hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get in the budget a tinted one that is not as mirror-like. But technically speaking, like I said, all glass, when it's brighter outside than inside, becomes mirror. Um, on, the, on the trash enclosure, widening it a foot or so, we, we, we do hope to be able to do that. Um, part of it is this, this right now, it's planned for probably two pickups a week, which enables smaller bins and dumpsters. Um, and there might be a few other things that I would comment on, but I think I'll, I'll, I'll keep it down. It's great that we have three times more bike parking than we do car parking. So this is the, the world you're creating here, and it's a good one. Thank you. Excuse me, could you introduce yourself? Uh, My name is Rick Kattenberg, and Kattenberg Architects the architect for the project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, how do we uh, word the um, window treatment? Well, I, as I said, I would suggest that you say words to the effect that the window, the existing window film on the Peladu frontage shall be removed and any replacement window treatment shall provide sufficient transparency to be able to see activity inside. Yeah, I, th I mean, I think that we're so f minimal improvements to the exterior of the building that, uh, you know, I know there's a little bit of cost involved in this, but I think I don't think it's that substantial, and I think it'll, you know, create a, sub you know, reasonably substantial improvement. So are you happy with that wording? Yeah. Yeah. So that, I, I will So do you want to read back the motions? You want me to? Uh, okay, so you have four conditions. Uh, remove the existing window uh, film on the Peladu side and any replacement window treatment shall provide uh, enough transparency to be able to see uh, indoor activity. That uh, staff of the broken rack shall patrol the parking lot for half an hour after closing to make sure that patrons are not being disruptive. Uh, indoor customer bicycle parking for four bicycles shall be provided. And the commission expresses a strong preference for the public art uh, contribution to be used for a mural with a train theme uh, <laughs> along the wall of the Greenway. That'll be in my motion. Okay, I would second that motion. All in favor? Um, Aye. Should I call the roll? Oh. Or do you want to do it by voice vote? Okay. Okay. Uh, if I can find, okay. Uh, Commissioner Donaldson? Aye. Commissioner Gunkel? Aye. Commissioner Keller? Aye. Commissioner Moss? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Tan? Aye. Vice, oh, uh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't update this yet. <laughs> Commissioner <laughs> Commissioner uh, Coomerly? Aye. And Chair Cardoza? Aye. Seven ayes. The application is approved. This decision may be appealed to the City Council within 15 days.